so very good evening to the students who have joined uh, can you let me know in the chat box if my voice is audible to you and also if the presentation is visible okay thank you for the confirmation uh, we will start soon once everybody joins
okay so we will wait uh, till 6 pm and then we will start today's session Yeah, so very good evening. Uh, we will wait till it's 6 p.m. and then we will start today's class. Meanwhile, I hope my voice is audible to you. And also you can clearly, uh, just let me know if you can clearly see the PPT. Let me know in the chat box if everything is fine. And then we will wait for uh, two minutes uh, till it's 6 p.m. and we will start today's session. Yeah, so thank you for the confirmation. We will uh, start shortly, so please wait. <coughs> Okay, so let us start with the introduction. So very good evening to the students who have joined. My name is Moshumi Dev and I am the PMRF fellow from the Department of Chemistry and Chemical Biology, IIT ISM Dhanbad. Today it is our week 9 live session for this NPTEL course of medicinal chemistry. So like uh, each Tuesday from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. we are having this kind of problem solving session where I will discuss about all around 20 questions related to that week's topic which, which week is live uh, on that time. So uh, today uh, is, it is a week 9 live session and we will discuss uh, about the week uh, 10 course contents. Right now the week 10 is live. So today we will discuss the questions which are related to the week 10 uh, course content. These kind, we will discuss the MCQ kind of questions but uh, I will give you the uh, broad description or the uh, explanation about that particular question. So it will be helpful for you for understanding the content better for that week and uh, it will also help you to solve that week's assignment. But before starting just like every week I will just uh, go through few points. So yeah. 
so first there will be this kind of problem solving sessions every week till we are uh, over with our course okay so we have 12 week this is a 12 week course so we will have a 12 week of uh, 12 times we will have this problem solving session for 12 week and also we will have one hour uh, extra problem solving session which will be our summary session where i will summarize the whole course and we will discuss whatever problems you have on this summary course also and even if you have any problem during this also this time all you can just uh, drop an email to me and also you can let me know in the during the sessions okay so these sessions will be on every tuesday from 6 pm to 8 pm and these sessions will be live on the google meet platform the code for the google meet meeting is the same okay the the whatever the code we are using today it is the same uh, for every week and this is the your google meet code so this is the same for every week so you can just save it and use it uh, on every week uh, for joining the classes so there won't be any problem and uh, this kind of uh, during the session uh, the students can post their queries and doubts through the chat box for the uh, since i am recording the session for uploading for the students who cannot join uh, the live sessions for them i am recording it and i will upload it soon uh, so, so so that i can just uh, record it smoothly i have just muted your uh, microphones and cameras but if you have any doubt any query you just let me know in the chat box and uh, from time to time i am just checking the chat box you can answer the questions which i am asking during the session and also you can post your doubt your query anything that you want to share in the chat box so if any network disruption happens from my side so please uh, do not uh, leave the class okay mm, uh, i will try to join as soon as possible so do not leave the class uh, in between and if there is any network issue issue from your side so you can just rejoin at any time there is no problem you can rejoin into the class at any time and if uh, after the class if you can uh, if your doubt persists you can just drop an email to me i always share my email id uh, at the end of the session so you can just uh, drop an email to me or also you can just write your doubts in the uh, student forum of nptl swam portal okay there is a discussion forum for every course you just can go to the discussion forum and drop your query or question we can just uh, solve it later okay and this presentation what i whichever i am presenting today and the class recording will be uh, shared to you in that particular swam website also there will be a, a portion with uh, writing which is written as problem solving session you can just go there and check the class recording and also the presentation so as i have mentioned today it is our week 9 session and today we will discuss the topics which are in your week uh, 10 course content right now the week 10 is live so let's see what are the contents of the week 10 so these are the contents of the week 10 there is combinatorial and parallel synthesis computer in medicinal chemistry antibacterial agents which is divided into part 1 and part 2 and then we have a tutorial about combinatorial and parallel synthesis computers in medchem and also antibacterial agents okay so now i will uh, start the session just let me check how many of you have joined okay fine so now i will start the session okay i will ask you the questions and in the chat box you have to uh, tell me which, uh, which is the correct uh, answer for that particular question all the questions will be mcqs so let me know whichever which option will be correct and i will check uh, it's in some time and then we will discuss it so the first question of today's session is solid phase synthesis is frequently used in the combinatorial synthesis what is meant by solid phase synthesis your options are number a reactions are carried out without a solvent Number B, reagents and reactants are attached on a solid phase support. Number C, reagents are used in the solid phase. And number D, molecules are constructed on a solid phase support. Again, I am repeating the first question. Solid phase synthesis is frequently used in combinatorial chemistry. What is meant by solid phase synthesis? Your options are number A, reactions are carried out without solvent. Number B, reagents and reactants are at attached to a solid phase support number c reagents are used in a sol the solid phase and number d molecules are constructed on the solid phase support so i will give you some time read options carefully then let me know in the chat box a b c d or d whichever whichever you think is the correct one the correct answer for problem number one since we are not having any kind of marks for answering but it will be better for you if you are answered during the session so i will understand if you are following uh, or not and also if you have understood the course on, uh, or the topics or not
let me check the chat box now then we will discuss it okay so i have two op uh, options as answer number d and number b okay now let me check which of the following is the correct meanwhile i uh, just request all of you whoever is present in the class please answer okay if you do not answer i won't understand if you are following or not so please answer so number b and number d are the given option answers for this question i will show you the answer and then we will discuss it so the correct answer will be number d molecules are constructed on a solid phase support now let us discuss what is a solid phase synthesis what is meant by uh, solid phase synthesis so basically solid phase synthesis uh, so this is a combinatorial synthesis process okay which is based on the solid phase chemistry it uses filtration as a separation and purification technique the easy removal of unwanted substance by the simple filtration is the core of the library synthesis in this synthesis the substituted resin beds are used as solid phase which is actually a gel like matrix of connected polymeric molecules distended by the axis of solvent molecule so what is a resin bed so the use of solid support in the organic synthesis that's required a cross linked insoluble but solvent soluble polymeric material that is inert to the con conditions of the synthesis some means of linking the uh, some means uh, the, the linking of the substrate to the solid phase that permits the selective cleavage of the product from the solid support during the synthesis a synthetic procedure compatible with the linker and the solid so this is the solid phase synthesis so in this case the molecules that are constructed on a solid phase support okay and this solid phase synthesis is very frequently used in combinatorial chemistry because it is very easy for the purification technique okay only the the products that will be they will be attached to the your solid phase support not the other molecules so you can just wash the things okay and uh, the easy removal of unwanted substrate for the simple um, filtration so it generates the uh, a library synthesis and this is which is very easy so the the option number d was the correct for the problem number 1 so now i will move toward the next problem so problem number 2 says which of the following is not a semi synthetic antibacterial agent your options are number a ampicillin number b carbenicillin number c cephalexin and number d sulfonamide which of the following is not a semi synthetic antibacterial agent all of you who are present in the class please try to answer the questions i will give you some time think and let me know a b c or d which of the following will be the correct answer for problem number 2 which of the following is not a semi synthetic antibacterial agent ampicillin carbenicillin cephalexin or sulfonamide i will give you 3 uh, to 4 minute for each question then i will check the chat box and we will discuss that option
so let me check the chat box now <coughs> Okay, I have now uh, lots of answers for this question. So we have like number D, number D, number B. So I have two number D and one number B. Okay, now let me check the chat box and uh, it's okay now. Let me show you which of the following is the correct one and we will discuss this. <coughs> okay, so the correct answer will be Yes, it is number D, sulfonamide. So, sulfonamide is not a semi-synthetic antibacterial agent. This is the structure of sulfonamide. Now, sulfonamides are very similar to the amides. So, for amides, we have the, it is a combination for the carboxylic acid and then we have this uh, amine part and in case of amides, we have only ketone group C double bond O but in case of sulfonamide, we have this sulfur and two oxygens here, okay, which is the sulfonamide bond, okay. So, this is a synthetic antibacterial agent, okay. Uh, this particular sulfonamide is not a semi-synthetic but it is a fully synthetic antibacterial agent. So now there are various type of sources of antibacterial agent. First and very important is the natural antibacterial sources uh, from mainly the fungal sources. The original antibiotics were derived from fungal sources. This can be referred to as the natural antibiotics. For example, benzyl penicillin and gentamicin are natural antibiotics. Then we have semi-synthetic antibiotics, chemically altered natural compound developed to decrease the toxicity and increase the effectiveness of the naturally mm, found antibacterial agents. For example, ampicillin, amikacin are semi-synthetic antibiotics. Then we have the synthetic antibiotics. These are chemically designed in the laboratory. Bacteria are not exposed to the compounds until they are released. They are also designed to have greater effectiveness and less toxicity like moxifloxacin, norfloxacin are example of an, uh, synthetic uh, antibiotics. So now sulf uh, sulfonamides or they are also known as sulfa drugs are antibiotics that have structural similarity with the paraaminobenzoic acid or PABA containing the sulfonamides SO2 NH2 groups in their chemical structure. They have bacteriostatic action against the gram positive and gram negative bacteria for example, sulfadiazine, sulfamethoxazole, uh, cotrimazole, uh, trimethoprim. So, all these are sulfonamides or sulfur drugs. So, what is the mechanism of action? So, generally, sulfonamides compete with the paraaminobenzoic acid or PABA, uh, which is an essential precursor in the synthesis of folic acid required for the synthesis of DNA and RNA in case of bacteria. They inhibit the bacterial folate synthetase and lead to the impairment of the DNA formation, and that's how they show their uh, anti bacterial activity. So, in case of sulfonamides, so this is the mechanism of action of sulfonamides are also very important. So, what you have to remember, you have to remember what is the structure of sulfonamide. You have to remember that it is a synthetic antibacterial agent like example sulfadiazine, sulfamethoxazole, trimethoprim, all the other sulfur drugs or sulfonamides. Okay. And their structure strongly they mimic to the structure of paraaminobenzoic acid which is a very important substrate or very important essential or precursor in case of the synthesis of bacterial folic acid. Okay. So, the, this bacterial folic acid is now required for the synthesis of DNA and RNA in case of the bacteria. So, these sulfonamides they mimic the paraaminobenzoic acid and bind to the uh, receptors which uh, is originally for this paraaminobenzoic acid or PABA. So, now the folic acid synthesis cannot happen. Okay. Okay, thus they are inhibiting the bacterial folate synthesis and then uh, the DNA synthesis is not com full completed for the bacteria and, th and then the bacteria they won't survive anymore. Okay? So, that is how this sulfonamides they show their antibacterial uh, properties. So, this you have to remember uh, the different sources of antibacterial agent, the natural, semi-synthetic, synthetic, they are examples, the sulfa drugs, sulfa drugs example and also the mechanism of action. Okay? So, yeah, number D was the correct. So, now I will move toward the next problem. So, problem number 3 it says that what is the mechanism of action of tetracyclines? Your options are number A prevention of bacterial DNA synthesis, number B prevention of bacterial protein synthesis, number C prevention of bacterial cell wall synthesis and number D prevention of bacterial RNA synthesis. What is the mechanism of action of tetracyclines? 
again I will repeat what is the mechanism of action of tetracycline prevention of bacterial DNA synthesis prevention of bacterial protein synthesis prevention of bacterial cell wall synthesis and prevention of bacterial RNA synthesis whenever we are learning about the antibacterial agent the things which are important in this case you have to remember what are the different classifications of the antibacterial agents what are the mechanism of action for a particular class and also what are the examples of that kind of uh, antibacterial agent so this kind of questions can come like this that you are given a particular structure of an antibacterial agent for example let's say for tetracycline you are just given a structure of a tetracycline containing a tetracycline class of antibiotic and then you are asked what is the mechanism of action that's why uh, the remembering the uh, structure of the particular drugs are also very important i will give you some time think and then let me know in the chat box which of the following will be the correct answer all of you who are present in the class please participate and uh, answer me in the chat box about which of the following you think is the correct one Okay, let me check the chat box now. Okay, so here we have few answers. Okay, from this number B, number B. Okay, so number B is the only given answer for the question. Okay, let me check if number B is the correct one or not. So the correct answer was number B, the prevention of bacterial protein synthesis. Now we have to know how this particular tetracyclines, they prevent the bacterial protein synthesis. So because we all know there are several ways by which the protein synthesis can be inhibited or prevented, right? So the mechanism of action for tetracyclines, so tetracyclines enter the susceptible organisms via the passive diffusion and by an energy dependent transport protein mechanism unique to the bacterial inner cytoplasmic membrane. Tetracyclines concentrate intracellularly in susceptible organism. The drugs bind reversibly to 30th subunit of the bacterial ribosome. This action prevents the binding of tRNA to the mRNA ribosome complex and thereby inhibiting the bacterial protein synthesis. Okay, So this is the structure of bacterial ribosome. If you remember, I have discussed about the structural differences between the uh, 
प्रोकैरियोटिक राइबोजोम एंड यू कैरियोटिक सो इनकेस ऑफ यू कैरियर्स वी हैव एटी एस एंड आई थिंक एट्टी एस एंड सिक्सटी एस सॉरी सिक्सटी एस एंड फोर्टी एस राइबोजोम और सब यूनिट्स ओके बट इन केस ऑफ दिस पर्टिकुलर प्रो कैरियर्स वी हैव अ फिफ्टी एस एंड थर्टी एस राइबोजोम और सब यूनिट हेयर इन केस दिस इज द एम आर एन ए टेम्पलेट ओके एंड दिस इज एम आर एन ए राइबोजोम कॉम्प्लेक्स सो नाउ देयर वी हैव द टी आर एन ए ओके एंड द टी आर एन ए वी हैव द टू साइड वन इज द पी साइड एंड वन इज द ए साइड ओके एंड दिस पर्टिकुलर टेट्रासाइकिल इन द बाइंड टू द ए साइड ओके एंड दिस इज कॉल द ट्रांसफरेज साइड एंड वेन दिस पर्टिकुलर बाइंड दिस पर्टिकुलर टेट्रासाइकिल इज बाइंड टू दिस ए साइड ऑफ दिस केस दिस राइबोजोमल एम आर एन ए कॉम्प्लेक्स सो वॉट हैपन्स दिस एमिनो एसिडाइल टी आर एन ए दे कैन नॉट नाउ एट दे कैन नॉट नाउ बाइंड टू द पर्टिकुलर ए साइड एंड इफ दे कैन नॉट बाइंड दे विल इनहिबिट द बैक्टीरियल सिंथेसिस दिस इज एन एस इन पॉलीपेप्टाइड चेन एज यू कैन सी दिस इज दिस वॉज द एमिनो एसाइल टी आर एन ए बट नाउ सिंस द टेट्रासाइकिल इज बाइंडिंग हेयर नाउ दिस एमिनो एसाइल Three are there now cannot bind to this side, and the protein synthesis won't continue. Okay, so this is so remember the tetracyclines. They work. The tetracyclines they actually have a particular energy dependent transport protein mechanism, which is unique to the bacterial inner cytoplasm membrane. Now many of you can think that these kind of mechanisms can be also true for the uh, you can uh, for the uh, normal DNA synthesis or protein synthesis of the humans or the uh, host of the bacteria. But now this is doesn't happen because these mechanisms. Are unique for the bacterial inner cytoplasmic membrane. Okay, it will only act on the bacteria, but not for the eukaryotic ribosome because that structure is different. So remember, this uh, tetracyclines bind to the A site of the mRNA ribosomal complex of the bacteria and prevent the protein synthesis, and this is their mechanism of action. Okay, so now I will go to the next problem. Problem number four says mechanism of action of penicillin involves the inhibition of a particular enzyme in the bacterial cell wall. Identify this enzyme, this particular enzyme. Options are number A carboxy peptides, number B trans peptides, number C glycos glycosylase, and number D phosphatase. Again, I will repeat: mechanism of action of penicillin involves inhibition of a particular enzyme in the bacterial cell wall. Identify this particular enzyme. Your options are number A, carboxy peptides; number B, trans peptides; number C, glycosylase; and number D, phosphatase. Which particular enzyme's action is inhibited by penicillin in the bacterial cell wall? Again, I will give you some time. think and then let me know in the chat box
okay let me check the chat box now <coughs> Okay, I think we have uh, very un many answers. Okay, so it is B transpeptide is B, B, B and B. So everybody thinks it is the number B. Okay, now let me check if number B is the correct answer or not. And then we can discuss it. Okay, so the correct answer will be very good. Number B transpeptide is. So what is the mechanism of action of penicillin uh, and penicillin? class of antibiotics so basically penicillin inhibits the final cross linking stage in the cell wall synthesis of the bacteria it reacts with the transpeptidase enzyme to form an irreversible covalent bond inhibit the transpeptidase bonds leads to the now we can cell wall okay and the cells swell due to the water entering the cell then burst and this process is known as lysis penicillin possibly acts as an analog of l ala Gamma, gamma D L A portion of the pentapeptide chain. So lysis, what is lysis? Is the disintegration of cell by the rupture of cell wall and membrane. And this lysis is the main um, your uh, action by which the cell wall uh, rupture happens in case of that particular uh, penicillin kind of antibiotic. So as you can see, this is the penicillin, the structure of penicillin. Okay, and this is the analog of the L. Um, L uh, this is the acyl D L D L. Okay, and this is the particular portion of the pentapeptide chain for the tram, uh, transpeptide enzyme. Okay, so it mimics that particular portion and binds to the particular transpeptide enzyme and then inhibits the bacterial cell wall synthesis. So the correct answer was the transpeptidase. So now next question, problem number five, which says that which of the following is the general mechanism of action of vancomycin? Your options are number A, inhibition of metabolic enzyme, number B, inhibition of cell wall synthesis, number C, disruption of the protein uh, synthesis, and number D, inhibition of the nucleic acid transcription and replication. So which of the following is the general mechanism of action for vancomycin? Already I have told you that whenever we are learning about the antibacterial agents, the most important thing is to identify what are the different classes of antibacterial agents, what are the mechanism of action and what are the examples. Okay, any question can be given to you by uh, giving the, uh, the name of that particular class like tetracycline for example I have shown you. But in this case what I have, the question is has asked, you have given the name of the particular uh, antibacterial uh, drug, right. Also you can be given. Uh, the structure and you can just uh, you, it will be asked uh, what is the mechanism of action that's why it is very remember very important to remember the name the class and also the structure so here it is asked what is the general mechanism of action of vancomycin number a inhibition of metabolic enzyme number a number b inhibition of cell wall synthesis number c disruption of protein synthesis and number d nucleic acid transcription and replication inhibition let me know in the chat box after your trial i will just check it and i will show you the correct answer all the students who are present please try to answer the questions okay because if you do not participate i won't understand if you are listening to me or not
okay let me check the chat box now okay i have several answers number c number b number b okay we have i have number b and number c as the answers okay let me just okay just i will just show you now what is the correct answer and we will discuss it so the correct answer will be it is number b inhibition of cell wall synthesis this is the structure of the vancomycin okay so the vancomycins they basically inhibit the cell wall synthesis of the bacteria okay and the inhibition of this is the cell wall as you can see and there is the cell membrane okay and the vancomycin they not only the disrupt the membrane integrity but also they inhibit the cell wall biosynthesis so vancomycin is a crucial drug of uh, last resort which inhibits the pg synthesis by the mm, uh, binding directly to the dlr dlr end of the peptide forms a cap over the end of the mm, uh, of the chain blocks the cross linking okay so transpeptidation and transglycosylation we have here which is resistant to osmotic pressure as self survival and vancomycin they bind to that uh, particularly the dlr dlr end of the peptide the form a cap okay whenever this caps are formed so then the cell wall will be susceptible to the osmotic pressure which is the cell lysis and so it inhibits the peptidoglycan biosynthesis of the bacterial cell wall blocks the transglycolysis and transpeptidase uh, activity prevents the transpeptidation linking and stops the bacterial cell wall mutation okay so this is the mechanism of action of the vancomycin and it is a drug of last resort okay because this is a very uh, strong antibiotic agent so this is given at the last first uh, different uh, another type of antibacterial agents are used and if they do not work then this kind of vancomycin kind of drugs are used okay so remember vancomycin inhibits the peptidoglycan biosynthesis in the cell wall blocks the transglycolysis and transpeptidase activity prevents the transpeptidation linking and stop the bacterial cell wall maturation okay so inhibition of cell wall synthesis is the general mechanism of action for vancomycin so now i will move toward the next problem problem number 6 is what is the reaction catalyzed by the beta lactamase enzyme the options are number a the final cross linking reaction to form the bacterial cell wall number b the hydrolysis of the acyl side chain of penicillin structures number c the hydrolysis of the four member ring present in the penicillin and number d the biosynthesis of the penicillin structure from amino acid valine and cytosine what is the reaction catalyzed by the beta lactamase enzyme number a the final cross linking reaction to form bacterial cell wall number b hydrolysis of acyl side chain from penicillin structures number c hydrolysis of the four member ring present in the penicillin and number d biosynthesis of the penicillin structure from the amino acids valine and cytosine again i will give you some time think and let me know in the chat box all of you try to answer the problem number six the reaction which is catalyzed by beta lactamase enzyme and let me know in the chat box a b c or d which of the following is the correct option
Okay, let me check the chat box now. <coughs> okay, number C, number C, number C. So all of you think it is the number C. Now let me check if number C is the correct one or not. Okay, so the correct answer will be the reaction which is catalyzed by beta lactamase enzyme is yes it is the number C the hydrolysis of the four member ring present in the penicillin. So this ring is known as beta lactam. This lactam means it is a cyclic amide okay lactone is the cyclic ketone now cyclic esters okay this is the lactone and the cyclic amides they are known as lactam. This is called beta lactam because we have this, uh, this is alpha carbon which is next to the carbon, uh, carbonyl carbon and then this is the beta carbon. Okay, so this is, that's why it is known as beta lactam. So be, this is the structure of the penicillin. So what does this beta lactamase enzyme do? The beta lactamase they actually um, hydrolyzes this particular beta lactam ring okay, and open this up. Okay, and this is the you know, we have two type of beta lactamases. One is called the serine beta lactamase, and one the second is the metallo beta lactamase. What happens during the for the serine beta lactamase? There is a serine subunit which is important. Okay, this serine subunit, what does it do? Serine, we all know it is the uh, amino acid which has a hydroxyl group as a side chain. This hydroxyl portion of the serine amino acid. So, first, what happens? This um, uh, hydroxyl group of serine amino acid acts as a nucleophile and attacks on the carbonyl carbon and this ring opening happens then we have a water molecule in the vicinity and then we have a glutamate 166 residue which acts as a basic residue and this takes up the proton from the nearby water molecule and this then this uh, water molecule um, becomes the, the more uh, powerful nucleo uh, nucleophile which is the hydroxyl and then it acts uh, attacks on the particular this uh, carbonyl carbon and we um, just get back this our particular serine subunit and which is the first step is the acylation step and the second step is the deacylation step. For in case of metallo beta lactamase we have a zinc okay this zinc bound hydroxyl group acts as a particular um, nucleophile attacks on the car um, carbonyl carbon of the beta lactam ring and this is the active site uh, structure and this zinc is bounded with the three histidine unit. So remember in case of metallo beta lactamase we have the zinc as the center of the part active site okay which is bound to the three histidine subunit and we have a hydroxyl which acts as a nucleophile in case of serine beta lactamase we have a uh, serine subunit okay and this serine subunit acts as a nucleophile at first in the acylation step and then we have a glutamate residue which makes a nearby water molecule more nucleophilic and then it cleaves this de and the acylation step happens and we get back our serine subunit okay so yeah option number uh, c was the correct one for the problem number six so now i will move toward the problem number seven which says that which of the following diagram has the correct numbering system for fluoroquinolones your options are number a b c and d so this is all the structures are for the fluoroquinolone but the numbering is different as you can see there are different different numbering for the fluoroquinolone system and you have to identify which of the following diagram has the correct numbering system for the fluoroquinolones a b c or d fluoroquinolone are the quinolone class of antibiotic agents okay this is the structure of quinolone we all know what is the structure of quinoline so basically i will just show you once so, so the, we all know what is the structure of quinoline the structure of quinoline is a bicyclic okay heterocycle molecule we have this and then we have a six member ring fused with it we have a nitrogen here and this is the structure of quinoline okay so okay sorry this is just a moment with this this is the structure of quinoline and it is known as quinolone because we have a ketone group present here so then that's why it is known as quinolones and since we have a fluorid so this is known as fluoroquinolones so what this is the overall structure of a fluoroquinolone and so you have to identify what is the correct numbering system a b c or d again i will give you three to four minute look at the numberings very carefully and then make the judgment and let me know in the chat box which of the following is the correct numbering system for fluoroquinolones.
Okay, let me check the chat box. Okay, so I think I have many options. Number C, number D, number A, number A, number A. Okay, so I have multiple answers. Like I have also number A and also number C and number D. So I have three different options as the answer. So now let me check which of the following is the correct one and then I, we can discuss it a little bit. Okay, so the correct answer will be number A. Okay, so now if you look at the structures carefully, so this is generic fluoroquinolone structure. Okay, so the basic structure is this one. Okay, there we have two bicyclic unit. This is the quinolone uh, structure, right? This is the quinolone structure where we have this nitrogen and the numbering, the naming starts from the nitrogen itself. So it starts from like number one, two, three, and four, and then the junctions they are not counted. Then we just go to here number five, six, seven, and eight, which is the number one. Okay, and everything will be from one side, and it starts from the particular nitrogen of the quinolone ring itself. Okay, and the now the ketone group, the ketonic group, it will be on number four, and then five, six, seven, and eight. This X X means it can be carbon and it can be nitrogen also or NH also. Okay, and then we have a carboxylic acid group at the number third position here, and this R one and the fluorine will be on the number six position. So these positions are very important, which you have to remember. What this is the one we have the nitrogen. This is the one. Okay, the nitrogen, uh, the, the ketone, ketone group, it is in the number 4. There is a carboxylic acid at number 3 and fluorine in the number 6 position. So, these positions are important for in case of the SAR of this kind of generic fluoroquinolone structure. And here various uh, your uh, examples are also given. First is the nalidixic acid which is the most common structure and which is the most simplified structure nalidixic acid. Then we have the uh, parfloxacin, ciprofloxacin, cetafloxacin, moxifloxacin, and levofloxacin. If there is a suffix like this oxacin, then you just uh, you will just understand that there is a floxacin kind of suffix. So, it will be on the fluoroquinolone kind of antibiotic agent and nalidixic acid is the most uh, uh, common, most I mean the starting point you can say the most simplified simplified uh, drug from this class of uh, compounds okay and this it does not have a particular quinolone structure it has a nitrogen here in case of carbon okay so now i will move toward the next problem problem number 8 says which of the following statements is not true for bacterial rheostatic agents your options are number a agents stop the growth of bacteria number b the bacterial population remains the same number c the agents destroy the bacteria and number d the agents inhibit the processes like replication translation and transcription which of the following statement is not true in case of bacteriostatics agent whenever there is a not true true false and incorrect incorrect type of question read the options very carefully because students tend to make mistake in this kind of question very frequently so first read the options very carefully take some time and then let me know in the chat box all of you try to answer the question let me know in the chat box which of the following statement you think is not true regarding the bacteriostatic agents your options are number a the agents stop the growth of bacteria number b the bacterial population uh, remains the same number c the agents destroy the bacteria and number d the agents inhibit the processes like replication translation and transcription
let me check the chat box now <laughs> नंबर सी नंबर सी नंबर सी नंबर सी नंबर बी नंबर ओके सो वी आई हैव नंबर बी एंड नंबर सी आर दिस आर द मोस्ट गिवन आंसर्स नाउ लेट मी चेक सो द करेक्ट आंसर विल बी इट इज द नंबर सी द एजेंट्स डिस्ट्रॉय द बैक्टीरिया दिस स्टेटमेंट इज नॉट ट्रू फॉर बैक्टीरियोस्टैटिक एजेंट्स so the definition is that the bacteriostatic are the antimicrobial agents that reversibly inhibit the growth of the bacteria okay and bacteriocidal those with an irreversible lethal action or the bacteria are known as the bacteriocidal okay so bacteriostatic they actually inhibit the growth but they do not kill the bacteria bacteriocidal are the agents which kill the bacteria for example penicillin and iso niazid these are the bacteriocidal agents and tetracyclines chloramphenicol they are the bacteriostatics so what are the differences bactericidal refers to antibiotics that kill bacteria but bacteriostatic refers to the antibiotics that prevent the growth of the bacteria the action for the bacteriocidal are irreversible but the action are reversible for the bacteriostatics the bactericidal inhibit the cell wall formation of the bacteria the bacteriostatic inhibit the dna replication and protein synthesis of the bacteria the bactericidal do not work with the immune system of the host okay and but bacteriostatic bacteriostatic they work with the immune system of the host to prevent the growth and reproduction of the bacteria mbc which refers to the concentration of the drug required to kill 99.99% of bacteria in a bacterial population and mic is the minimum drug concentration which inhibits the bacterial growth for the example of the bacteriocidal is the include beta lactam antibiotics like cephalosporin and vancomycin and examples include tetracyclines spectromycin chloramphenicol and sulfonamides for the bacteriostatic okay so these are the differences mm, of the bacteriostatics and bactericidal antibacterial agents so now i will go to the next problem so problem number 9 says which of the following statement is false regarding the gram positive bacteria your options are number a very much susceptible to antibiotics number b they have a low lipid content number c peptidoglycan layer is thin majorly single layer and number d outer membrane is not present which of the following statement regarding gram positive bacteria is false your options are again i will repeat number a they are very much susceptible to antibiotics number b they have a low lipid content number c the peptidoglycan layer is thin and majorly single layer and number d outer membrane is not present in case of the gram positive bacteria which of the following statement is false again i will give you some time think and let me know which of the following you think is the correct option which of the following statement is false regarding the gram positive bacteria check i will check the chat box and then i will just show you the answer and we can discuss okay 
number C, number C, number C, number D, number C. So I have many multiple number C and one number D. So let me check which of the following is the correct one. So the false statement regarding the gram positive bacteria will be number C. Peptidoglycan layer is thin and majorly single layer. This is the false statement. Okay. So the differences between the gram positive and gram negative bacteria for the parameters we will judge for this two kind of bacteria is the cell wall, cell wall thickness, peptidoglycan layer, term tachoic acid, lipopolysaccharides, outer membrane, lipid container, and resistance to antibiotic. In case of gram positive bacteria, the cell wall is a single layer smooth cell wall. But in case um, of the gram negative bacteria, the, uh, the cell wall is a double layer wavy. Um, uh, okay. And the cell wall and wavy cell wall. Cell wall thickness, the thickness of cell wall is 20 to 80 nanometer in case of gram positive, but in case of gram negative, the cell wall thickness is 8 to 10 nanometer. Uh, the peptidoglycan layer it is thick and it can be multi-layered in case of the gram positive bacteria. But in case of gram negative bacteria, the peptidoglycan layer is thin and often single layer. So this is the uh, this uh, sometimes uh, you, some students get confused between the cell wall and peptidoglycan layer thickness because the two are opposite. So just be careful in case of this. So remember peptidoglycan layer is thick layer or multi-layered in case of gram positive, but the cell layer is a single layer and smooth cell wall. And in case of gram negative bacteria, the cell wall is a double layer wavy cell wall but the peptidoglycan layer is a thin layer and often single layer. Tachoic acids are present in case of gram positive bacteria but absent in case of the gram negative bacteria. Lipopolysaccharides are not present or absent in case of gram positive bacteria but these are present in case of gram negative bacteria. For outer membrane, the outer membrane is not present in case of gram positive bacteria but the mm, outer membrane is mostly present in gram negative bacteria. The lipid content is very low in case of gram positive bacteria. The lipid content is very is about 20 to 30 percent in gram negative bacteria. The resistance to antibiotic, they are very susceptible to antibiotics the gram positive ones and the gram negative bacteria they are uh, very resistant uh, to antibiotics okay so these are the differences between the gram positive and gram negative bacteria so now I will move toward the next problem problem number 10 says which reaction is catalyzed by beta lactam enzyme the beta lactamase enzyme the options are number a uh, okay I think this question I have just repeated question Okay, uh, the options are number A, the final cross-linking reaction for the bacterial cell wall, number B, hydrolysis of the acyl side chain of penicillin, number C, hydrolysis of the four-member ring in penicillin, and number D is the biosynthesis of penicillin uh, from LLD uh, ACV. I think it, I have just uh, repeated this question. We have already discussed it earlier. Okay, just uh, take one minute and we will move forward. Let me check the chat box. So this was a repeating question, I think. So I know all of you have answered it correctly. I don't need to even check. 
but uh, still this is given I will just discuss it once yeah the hydrolysis okay so the mechanism of hydrolysis I have just shown it earlier again okay there is a serine residue which uh, helps for this uh, kind of uh, hydrolysis of the beta lactam ring which I have discussed and there is a base which is a glutamate residue as I already discussed about it okay and uh, this is the beta lactamase so yeah I will just skip it so problem number 11 says that IPN 26 APA conversion is done by your options are number A ACVS number B IPNS number C DAOCS and number D IPNA IPN 26 APA conversion is done by which enzyme ACVS IPNS DAOCS or IPNA sometimes the questions can be given you only in case of the in, uh, as the abbreviated form you have to so that's why it is very important to just uh, uh, remember what are the abbreviated form of the particular uh, things okay otherwise uh, this kind of question answering it will be a little bit trickier but if you remember the abbreviated forms you can easily answer this kind of problems IPN to 6 APA conversion is done by which enzyme ACVS, IPNS, DAOCS or IPNA. Let me check the chat box. Number A, number D, number D, number D. Okay, so I have multiple number D and one number A. So let me check if which of the following will be the correct one. So the correct answer will be number D, I, P, N, A. So this is the synthesis for in case of the uh, penicillin. So this is I will just show you this is L alpha amino adipic acid, L lysine and L valine. Okay, these three the amino adipic acid, cysteine and valine which are abbreviated as A, C and V. Okay, alpha amino adipic acid, cysteine and valine these are abbreviated as A, C, V and these three are combined to make the ACV which is delta L alpha amino adipoyl L cystinyl D valine which is ACP and the enzyme which uh, is used in case this portion of the synthesis is known as ACVS which is the ACV synthetase. Then we have the IPN which is the isopenicillin N. Isopenicillin N is um, formed from ACV by the enzyme IPNS which is the IPN synthetase. Okay and then IPN amino hydrolase or acyl transferase is the enzyme which makes the IP, IPN conversion to 6 APA or 6 APA is the 6 amino penicillinic acid okay so the enzyme which is uh, used here or which takes place takes part in case conversion of IPN to 6 APA which is 6 uh, amino penicillinic acid is the IPN amino hydrolase or acyl transferase which is abbreviated as IPNA. Then we have um, this amine IPNA again uh, where the 6 APA is converted to other penicillins and IPN apimarase is the enzyme which converts IPN to penicillin N 
and then it is converted to D-acetoxycephalosporin C or DAOC by the using the enzyme DAOC synthetase or DOAC, uh, DAOCs. Okay. So, this and then this DAOC it converts to other cephalosporin and cephamycins. Okay. So, this is the full converse synthesis of um, um, IPN, 6AP and penicillins and cephalosporins from the starting amino acids which are L-alpha amino atypic acid, L-cysteine and L-valine. So, now problem number 12 says erythromycin belongs to dash class of antibiotics. Options are number A macrolide, number B tetracycline, number C oxalidinone and number D quinolone. Which class of antibiotics erythromycin belongs to? I think it is very easy question and I know all of you can answer it correctly. So, just take 2 minutes and all of you answer this correctly in the chat box. Erythromycin belongs to which class of antibiotics? Macrolide, tetracycline, oxalidinone or quinolone? Let me check the chat box. Okay, sirs, I have just guessed it right that all of you have answered it correctly, I think. So, now let us discuss it a little bit. So, erythromycin belongs to the yeah, macrolide class of antibiotics. So, this is the structure of erythromycin and 
mechanism of action erythromycin displays the antibacterial bacterial cellular activity uh, particularly at higher concentration it prevents the growth of bacteria by inhibiting their protein synthesis erythromycin binds to the 23s rrna molecule in the 50s ribosomal subunit this binding blocks three exist of growing the peptide thus inhibiting the translocation of the peptides okay so remember this pers erythromycin binds to the 23s rrna molecule in the 50s ribosomal subunit so there is a difference okay because in case of tetracycline we have if you remember that the tetracycline is bind to the a site but in case of the erythromycin it um, belong it binds to the 50 23s rna molecule in the 50s ribosomal subunit and the binding blocks the three exist of growing peptidic chain okay here as you can see it bind and in inhibits the translocation of the growing peptide chain and that's how it um, inhibits the protein synthesis and uh, it shows this bactericidal activity okay so now next problem problem number 13 says merifil resin is your options are number a chloroformylated polystyrene number b chloroacetylated polystyrene number c silicon uh, silicon dioxide the polymer of silicon dioxide and number d polymethyl methacrylate Merifil resin is which of the following polymers? Chloroformylated polystyrene, chloroacylated polystyrene, poly uh, silicon dioxide, the polymer of silicon dioxide, or polymethyl methacrylate. Which will be the correct answer? What is the merifil resin? Let me check the chat box now. Okay, number B, number D, number B, number A, number A, number, okay, this is the previous one, I think. So, number B and number D is the given options for or given answers for this one. Now, let me check which of the following is the correct one. So, the correct answer will be number a chloroformylated polystyrene that is known as the merifil resin so this is the structure this is the chloroformylated polystyrene which is known as the merifil resin so merifil resin basically used in the solid state peptide synthesis okay so this is the peptide synthesis so this is peptide synthesis uh, cycle okay the way we first we have the merifil resin okay first this merifil resin is deprotection happens and then act followed by activation and coupling in the deprotection of uh, the, uh, the first in the deep the first the first so these are the various steps as you can see this as is the polystyrene unit okay and first we have the particular amino this is the amino acid unit okay so first what happened in during the coupling phase we have the protected uh, this pro uh, particularly protected uh, am amino acid one case in another case we have the amino acid which is bound to the uh, peptide resin bed okay this is the resin bed and we this is the free am amine group of the resin bound amino acid okay and what happens the carboxylic acid group 
of that particular amino acid is bind with uh, this reacted with the chloroformylated end and we have this kind of resin bound uh, amino acid which has a free NH2 group and we have a protected FMOC protected amino acid here ok so first step is the coupling step uh, which uh, happens uh, for the coupling agents are HBTU this kind of uh, amide coupling reagents are used this is the approximate time is 6 minute for this coupling then after the coupling what uh, what happens the deprotection step what happens during the deprotection step the 20 percent piperidine in DMF microwave are used to cleave this FMOC protecting group from this position and then the cleavage phase that what due, what happens during the cleavage phase the trifluoroacetic acid is used to cleave the particular amino acids from the uh, resin bed okay so the steps of the solid step prepared synthesis is coupling deprotection and cleavage and merifil is resin is the used resin for the solid uh, as a solid uh, support for in case of solid state peptide synthesis and the merifid resin is nothing but a chloroformylated polystyrene okay so now next question problem number 14 says clavonic acid is your options are number a an irreversible inhibitor of transpeptidase enzyme number b a reversible inhibitor of l alanine racemase number c a suicide inhibitor of serine based beta lactamase enzyme and number d a reversible inhibitor of serine based beta lactamase enzyme Clavanic acid is again I will repeat option A an irreversible inhibitor of transpeptidase enzyme option B a reversible inhibitor of L alanine racemase number C a suicide inhibitor of serine based beta lactamase enzyme and number D reversible inhibitor of serine based beta lactamase enzyme. Okay, let me check the chat box now. Okay, number C, number C, number D, number D, number D. So, number D and number C are the most given answers. Let me check which of the following is the correct one. So, the correct answer will be number C. It is a suicide inhibitor of serine based beta lactamase enzyme. This is the structure of the clavionic acid. So, this is the systematic name uh, you do not need to remember ok the systematic name this is just for your um, information I have just uh, given it. So, it is like 2 R 5 R Z 3 2 hydroxy ethylidine uh, 7 oxo 7 oxa 7 as a bicyclo 3 2 0 heptane 2 carboxylic acid that is the IUPAC name of this carboxylic acid which you do not need to remember ok. So, clavionic acid can be considered as the most important and representative among the inhibitors of beta lactamase this is first clinically useful beta lactamase inhibitor was identified as a natural product from the strain of streptomyces clavionius structurally it is a one diazepin lacking 6 acyl amino acid chain of penicillin but possessing 2 hydroxy ethylene moiety which is this one ok at the C2 position. So, there is a particular uh, this is the uh, amoxicillin ok and clavionic acid. So, this is the penicillin enzyme beta lactamase attacks uh, here ok and basically here it is the where the, um, the penicillin beta lactamase attacks the enzyme is produced in many penicillin bacteria and then the penicillin inhibits the action of 
penicillin enzyme the potassium clavanate okay this is the potassium salt of this clavanic acid and this is the antibacterially inactive so this clavanic acid inhibits this position and this is a suicide inhibitor and i think i have discussed what is a suicide inhibitor in your previous classes and uh, one more thing amoxicillin and potassium clavanate these all together are known as augmented which is a very powerful medicine antibacterial medicine okay composition the amoxicillin and the potassium clavanate okay so this is a very powerful combination of the antibacterial agents where the particular antibacterial agent is amoxicillin and the potassium clavonate is uh, added as a um, in suicide inhibitor of the beta lactamase enzyme so that the amoxicillin's beta lactam ring can be uh, kept unbothered okay so the next problem problem number 15 says which of the following statement regarding solid state synthesis is false your options are number a cross linked insoluble polymeric support is needed Number B, an anchor or link should be attached with the support. Number C, the anchor should contain reactive functional group. And number D, the protective group of functional groups should be involved in the synthetic roots. Which of the following statement regarding the solid state synthesis is false? Your options are number A, cross link insoluble polymeric support is needed. Number B, an anchor or link should be attached with the support. Number C, the anchor should contain reactive functional group. And number D, the protective group of the functional groups should involve in the synthetic roots. Which of the following statements regarding solid state synthesis is false? Let me check the chat box. Number C, number B, number D, number D, number D, D. Okay, so I have most of the answers as number D and few number B and number C also. So now let me check which of the following will be the correct one so the correct answer will be number d okay the statement which is false regarding the solid state synthesis is the protective group of functional group should involve in the synthetic root so the essential requirement of solid space synthesis are a crossed linked insoluble polymeric support which is inert to the system at synthetic conditions uh, for example a resin bed an anchor or linker covalently linked to the resin the anchor has a reactive functional group that can be used to attach the substrate a bond um, linking the substrate to the linker which will be stable to the reaction conditions used in the synthesis a means of cleaving the product or the intermediates from the linker protecting group of the functional group not involved in the synthetic root okay the protecting group should not get involved in the synthetic roots so this uh, problem number d is a so this is you have to remember the essential requirement of solid phase synthesis okay uh, like a cross linked insoluble polymeric support and anchor or linker a bond linking the substrate and the linker the means of cleaving the products and the protecting groups should not get involved in the synthetic root so now next problem 
problem number 16 says which of the following statement regarding molecular mechanics is false your options are number a in molecular mechanics the molecule is treated as a series of spheres connected by the springs number b torsional energies are associated with atoms separated from each other by three bonds number c molecular mechanics is used to calculate electronic properties of the molecule and number d molecular mechanics follow the classical laws of physics which of the following statement regarding molecular mechanics is false Option A, in molecular mechanics, the molecule is treated as a series of spheres connected by springs. Number B, torsional energies are associated with atoms separated from each other by three bonds. Number C, molecular mechanics is used to calculate electronic properties of molecule. And number D, molecular mechanics follow the classical laws of physics. Which of the following statement regarding molecular mechanics is false? Let me check the chat box now. Number C, number D, number A. I have multiple answers again. Number A, C and D are the given options and I have to check which of the following will be the correct one. So the statement which is false regarding the molecular mechanics will be number C. Molecular mechanics is used to calculate electronic properties of the molecule. This statement is false. So the computational method that are used to calculate the structure and property data can be split into two categories. One is the molecular mechanics and the second is the quantum mechanics. So molecular mechanics, the equations are used which follow the laws of the classical physics and apply them to the nuclei without consideration of the electrons. In essence, the molecule is treated as a series of spheres, the atoms connected by the springs, the bonds. The equation derived from the classical mechanics are used to calculate the different interactions and energies or the force field resulting from the bond stretching, angle bending, non-bonded interaction and torsional energies. Torsional energies are associated with the atoms that are separated from each other by three bonds. The relative orientation of these atoms are defined by the dihedral or torsion angle. Okay. So, the, in, uh, the torsion, uh, the, so the molecular mechanics, the torsional energy, so other options, I will just repeat other options like in molecular mechanics, molecular extruders string on some spheres are connected to the spring, it is the correct one. Torsional energies are associated with atoms separated from each other by three bonds, it is also correct. Molecular mechanics are used to calculate electronic properties, it is not the correct one, but it follows the classical laws of physics, it is again the correct option. Okay? So, option number C was the false regarding the molecular mechanics. So now problem number 17, 
it says which of the following operations or calculations can be doing uh, can be done using the quantum mechanics your options are number dipole moment calculation number b transition state angiometries and energies number c energy calculation for specific conformation and number d bond dissociation energy which of the following operations or calculation can't be done using the quantum mechanics Options are number A, dipole moment calculation, transition state geometries and energies, energy calculations for specific conformations and bond dissociation energies. Let me check the chat box now. Okay, the options answer are given number B, numbers, number D, number B, number C, number D, number D, number C. Okay, again I have different different answer number B, number C and number D three are given as and uh, different answers. Now let me check which of the following will be correct. So the which of the following can't be done using the quantum mechanics. It is the number C energy calculation for specific conformations. So the choice of method, the molecular mechanics is useful for the following operation calculations. Now the energy minimization, identifying stable conformation, energy calculation of specific conformation, generating different conformation and studying the molecular motion. And quantum mechanics methods are suitable for calculating the following molecular orbital energies and coefficients, heat of formation of specific conformation, partial atomic charges calculated from molecular orbital coefficients, electrostatic potentials, dipole moment, transition state geometries and energies and bond dissociation energy. So these are all can be calculated by the quantum mechanics and these are cal can be calculated by the using the molecular mechanics. So energy con calculation for specific conformation cannot be done by quantum mechanics but it can be done using using the molecular mechanics okay so now problem number 18 it says that which of the following antibiotics works by targeting dna guidance your options are number a sulfonamide number b tetracycline number c quinolone and number d glycopeptides which of the following antibiotics works by targeting dna guidance Take 2 to 3 minutes, then I will show you what is the correct answer and we will discuss it. Which of the following antibiotics works by targeting DNA guidance enzyme? Sulfonamide, tetracycline, quinolones and glycopeptides.
ओके लेट मी चेक द चैट बॉक्स नाउ नंबर सी इज द मोस्ट गिवन आंसर ओके आई हैव आई थिंक ऑल नंबर सी ओके लेट मी चेक इफ इट इज करेक्ट और नॉट सो द करेक्ट आंसर विल बी एज यू हैव सेड इट इज नंबर सी क्वीनोलोन्स आर द एंटीबायोटिक्स व्हिच वर्क्स बाय टारगेटिंग डीएनए गाइडेज so first i will just give you a overview of different different kind of antibiotic agents okay so there are several ways the antibiotics can uh, achieve its antibacterial activity by inhibition either cell wall synthesis of the bacteria or protein synthesis or the nucleic acid synthesis so the different classes of antibiotics which target the cell wall synthesis are the beta lactams like penicillin cephalosporin carbamazepam monobactams or vancomycin or bactericin or cell membrane uh, for for the polymycin okay and then we have protein synthesis inhibitors like for 50 s subunits we have macrolide clindamycin linozolide chloramphenicol and streptogenemus and for the 30 s subunit we have the uh, tetracyclines and aminoglycosides then for in case of nucleic acid synthesis if it targets the folate synthesis we have the trimethoprim and uh, the sulfonamides so we have the para amino benzoic acid to dhfa to thfa okay the first the para amino benzoic acid to dhfa it can be inhibited by sulfonamides and dhfa to thfa can be inhibited by trimethoprim and the dna guidance is inhibited by the quinolones and rna polymerase by rifam rifampin okay so these are the overview of the several different different antibiotics which act on different different portions of anti the bacteria and the, which inhibit the growth or kill the bacteria so as i have mentioned dna guidance is an essential bacterial enzyme that catalyzes the atp dependent negative supercoiling of the double stranded closed circular dna guidance belongs to a class of enzymes known as topoisomerase that involved in control topological transition of dna topoisomerases are able to change the dna topology uh, to fa um, uh, facilitate functions such as dna replication and transcription there this is the topoisomerase and we have fluoroquinolones so this is the structure of fluoroquinolones okay or quinolones this initial this portion is the binding to dna this portion binds to the enzyme and this binds to the enzyme okay quinolones bind to dna dna guidance to poisomers to complex blocking further dna replication and these are the bactericidal inhibit the dna synthesis by several ways causing the rapid cell death okay so quinolones were the correct answer so now i will move toward the next problem so problem number 19 says which of the following class of penicillins are synthetically formed acid stable and can be taken orally your options are number a penicillin g number b penicillin v number c ampicillin and number d uh, tetracycline which of the following class of penicillins is synthetically formed acid stable and can be taken orally again i will give you some time then i will check the chat box and show you the what is the correct answer which of the following class of penicillins is synthetically formed acid stable and can be taken orally penicillin g penicillin v ampicillin and tetracycline
Okay, let me check the chat box because I have to discuss it again. Okay, number C, number B, number B, number C, number D. I have multiple answers again. I think number B and number C are the given answers, most given answers. Now let me check which of the following will be the correct one. So the correct answer will be number C, ampicillin. Ampicillin is synthetically formed as it's stable and it can be taken orally. So this is the classification of uh, the penicillins. First is the source we can, which I have discussed earlier. It can be natural like penicillin G, biosynthetic, penicillin P, penicillin F and penicillin K or synthetic which is ampicillin and amoxicillin. Now, so then we have the spectrum of uh, activity like narrow spectrum, methicillin, oxicillin, uh, nafcillin or broad spectrum ampicillin, amoxicillin and extended like tigrisillin, azocillin. Then we have resistant to acid, we have acid stable as ampicillin, penicillin P, cycloxin, oxacin, acid stable like tigrisin, methicillin, papyrusin, penicillin G and the route of administration like oral like ampicillin, amoxicillin, cyclocillin, dexocillin and the parental uh, penterial uh, that is the penicillin G, methicillin and tigrisillin. So penicillin, ampicillin it is the one which is synthetically formed then it is acid stable and also it is can be taken orally okay and it is again it is a broad spectrum antibiotic so yeah ampicillin was the correct and now last question of today's session it says that which of the following statement is false regarding the vancomycin number a it inhibits the trans glycosation of and the transpeptidation number b it is a broad spectrum bacteris, uh, bacterial antibiotic Number C, it is mostly prescribed to treat the Streptococcus aureus uh, infection and number D, none of this. Which of the following statement regarding vancomycin is false? Your options are it inhibits the trans uh, glycosylation and transpeptidation. Number B, it is a broad spectrum bacterial, uh, bacterial antibiotic. Number C, it is mostly prescribed to treat the uh, Streptococcus aureus infection and number D, none of this. Okay, let me check the chat box and then I can discuss it. Okay, number A, number C, number A, number B, number C. So I have A, B and C three as different answers. Okay, let me check which of the following will be the correct one. So the correct answer will be 
Number B, it is a broad spectrum bacterial antibiotic, it is false regarding vancomycin. So vancomycin as I have discussed earlier also, it is a narrow spectrum bactericidal antibiotic. Okay, the mode of action is inhibition of trans uh, glycolization and transpeptization of cell wall and the therapeutic is in, uh, uh, uses is the MRSA infection. This ca caps the pentapeptide tail by hydrogen bonding and acts as a steric shield, blocks the access for the uh, transglycolase or transpeptidase. So this is a narrow spectrum antibiotic but it has a bactericidal effect that means it is going to kill the bacteria so it has a unique mode of action like penicillin vancomycin is also going to inhibit the transpeptidase enzyme but along with that it also inhibits the transglycolase enzyme because of this macromolecular structure vancomycin caps the pentapeptide tail by hydrogen bonding and thus it acts as a steric shield blocking the access to this pentapeptide membrane bound enzymes uh, such as transglycolases transpeptidase okay so this is a, a narrow spectrum antibiotic not the broad spectrum but it has a bactericidal effect so you have to just remember it so this was the last question of today's session so what we uh, did learn in today's session we discussed about many things about the combinatorial synthesis we discussed we started off by discussing about the combinatorial synthesis and also by uh, about the various uh, antibacterial agents we discuss the structures and the method of action of different different antibacterial agents so now i will just uh, type my uh, email id in the chat box just to give me one some time So this is my email id which i have just shared in the chat box so if you have any doubt any query regarding today's class you can just let me know right now because we have some time so remaining in today's class so if you have any doubt or any query regarding any question you can just let me know right now or you can just mail me in this email id which i have shared in the chat box okay any kind of question any kind of query i will be happy to answer so today it was our week 9 live session and we discussed about the courses content which are in the week 10 course content. So like every week, every Tuesday we will have this kind of uh, meetings on Tuesdays from 6 pm to 8 pm. Okay, uh, you can just uh, suggest me anything if you want to something to be incorporated in the problem solving sessions, your opinion, anything you can just let me know also. Okay, if you want to me to uh, change the way I am teaching in the problem solving session, you can just suggest something which will benefit you anything okay you just uh, feel free to uh, let me know so i will just uh, make the modification accordingly and uh, this presentation which i have discussed today and the recording of today's class both i will share soon you can just go to the swam portal and uh, you can just find a tab uh, saying as a problem solving session in that tab you will find there is a recordings and also the class presentation links which you can the presentation links you can download and the uh, youtube video links also are there which is for this class which you can just check later if you have anything which uh, you couldn't uh, answer or you couldn't attend due to the poor network connection you can find it here so thank you all for uh, joining today's session and for answering so well okay all of you i hope you have understood the contents which i have uh, told today and since if you have any again if you have any query any doubt you can just let me know not only for today's class anything any topic related to our course of medicinal chemistry you feel free to let me know in this email id i will surely try to answer that particular query in the next class okay so thank you all for attending the class i will just close the session for today now and uh, let's meet on the next Tuesday, the timing will be same for 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. And also we will have a summary session after, uh, I think before uh, on 13th or 14th April, I will just let you know the exact timing, it will be mailed to you. We will have a summary session, okay, a one hour of summary session in which I will summarize few topics which I couldn't teach well uh, for because these topics were not too much into your course but these topics are important for the medicinal chemistry so with that i will discuss in the summary class so i will let you know or we will let you know from the on behalf of nptl that what will be the, the schedule for the extra class so do join that class also okay so i will close the session for today thank you all for joining i will share the lecture ppt and the video soon with you so thank you all i will close the session for today